Well, the marriage started out great. Um, actually, the first day I met her, she moved in. 30 days later, we got married. It was a quick Vegas wedding. And you got married after 30 days. Sometimes you just think you know the right person. She's the judge who gives rules on the law and life. She's intense with common sense. She's Judge Lynn Toller on Divorce Court, where real couples deal with real life. Blake was so enamored with Christina that he moved her into his place after their first date and married her in a Las Vegas chapel just 30 days later. But after only a year and a half of marriage, Blake wants out. But as time went on, there was, you know, all the lying and everything. I just got to a point I couldn't take it anymore. Then he admits to me breaking down crying, telling me that he has had sex with her a couple of times. In spite of Blake's infidelities, Christina wants to save this marriage. Today on Divorce Court. All rise. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lynn Toller presiding. You may be seated. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with Christina Cummins and Blake Bailey. Ms. Cummins and Mr. Bailey, the two of you have been married for a year and a half, although you've been separated for the last month. Ms. Cummins, you want to stay married. You yes. want to save this union. Mr. Bailey, you have had enough and are ready to get out. But you say, Ms. Cummins, if in fact we cannot save this marriage, you would like $3,000 in transitional support, an amount which you will explain to me later. But before we do that, I'm going to uh, talk to Mr. Bailey. Mr. Bailey, why don't you tell me uh, a little bit about your marriage and what brings you here after only a year and a half? Well, the marriage started out great. Um, actually, the first day I met her, she moved in. 30 days later, we got married. It was a quick Vegas wedding. And you got married after 30 days. Sometimes you just think you know the right person. And <laughs> I was happier than I could be. But as time went on, there was, you know, all the lying and everything. I just got to a point I couldn't okay, take it anymore. Well, what lying? was she lying about? Can you give me an example? Yeah. The lying? One example. Hang like, on. These are just some examples. For example, um, like I work at a cellular phone place. Uh -huh. So, you know, I have access to phones, all that kind of stuff. Well, I, you know, I was texting her from a different number at my work. I'm saying I'm her ex-boyfriend. You know, she's going along with it and everything. You know, I'm trying to, you know, be like, oh, you want to hook up and stuff. And she's, you know, saying, oh, well, my husband might be able to read these texts. So don't say that kind of stuff over text, you know. Okay, how dare and you even say that for one when you were the one freaking cheating, okay? That's You're the one on. being deceitful. You're on. the one being, you know what I mean? Being... Mr. Bailey, did you have reason to suspect her? You can't her even say before that. Before that, is that the reason that you did it? or were A you friend just... had already told me that she had ran into him at the library. Uh -huh. So... But it doesn't mean I, I had I sex would, with him. I thought I would... Doesn't mean I had sex with him. Did hang, I know? Hang on, Miss Cummins. Hang on, Miss Cummins. Sorry. Go ahead. It said nothing about having sex with him, but it was referring to, you know, we're going to meet up, let's meet up. She's saying, oh, well, where can I meet up with you and stuff? And... So, well, you're going to meet up with the ex, Miss Cummins. That, well, did you think you were going to meet up with the ex? I've seen him before. It's nothing like how he's thinking. Uh -huh. I am just being his friend, actually. That's it. It's, he can think whatever he wants to think about that, but I never did anything like but that. But on the text, he was saying, you know, oh, yeah, to, to do sexual favors because, and stuff. So in, in the, you, uh, you entrapped her a little bit. You, you, you pretended would, to be you know, someone else. I was hoping I would get, uh, you know, an answer of I'm I understand being, I'm that. being I'm bad. I'm not asking yeah. you what you were hoping you were getting. I'm asking you what you did. Yes, you, I did. You pretended you were somebody else, and you pretended in a manner that made it a sexual encounter. Yes, to see how she would go off And it. she responded as if, yeah, this might be a good idea. Yeah. That, that's, that, not, that, that's not true. Well, well, I used what to just made to, you say yes? It was a really bad relationship, and um, when... I used to like we became friends again, you know, like later on, just as friends. And he, I would just say whatever, just to shut him up, you know what I mean? Just like whatever. But did I go through with it? No, I would never do anything. It doesn't look good, but I didn't do it. You say that he's blaming you, but he's really the cheater in the relationship, yes, correct? I had, why don't you tell me uh, why you believe he's cheated on you? Why? I know for a fact, for one, he introduced me to the girl, like, not, like, before, I just as friends, and she befriended me, we were friends, and then all of a sudden, I go through, I had a suspicion, a gut feeling, and I looked through both of their phones, and I saw that, oh, why don't you come to my work, oh, I bought you a tattoo equipment, and this and that, and other stuff, and 
Then he admits to me breaking down crying, telling me that he won't do it again, but he has had sex with her a couple of times. He first lied and said once, he first lied and said once, and then he broke down later on, a few hours later, and said, oh, it's been a couple of times. Mr. Bailey, is that accurate? That is accurate. At least I, yeah, I, came, I came to the table and I admitted my fault. Yeah, but uh, you don't care to do help our marriage. An, you know, you, I don't you, think that's an easy way out, but I think that it's yeah, at least... You seem all wound up about a text message, but when you actually but, commit to act multiple times, that's not really a problem. When Divorce Court continues, Christina and Blake's unconventional first meeting comes to light. The way we met my husband is not a normal way to meet a, a person. And well, tell me how you met him. All three of us had a threesome when we first met. And later. We had trouble with you. Tell me what happened last night. Divorce isn't easy. Call toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or visit our website at divorcecourt.com or become a fan at facebook.com slash divorcecourt. Divorce Court is back with the case of Blake Bailey, who claims he does not trust his wife, Christina. But does Blake have only himself to blame? When you meet somebody in the act of, how do you get from that to, to bride in 30 days. <laughs> Mr. Bailey. I'm sorry. Frankly, I didn't think we were going to be here today because uh, we had a little trouble with you. Uh, did yeah. we not? Last yeah. night? Oh, yeah, last night was lovely. You don't seem to have good judgment, Mr. Bailey. <laughs> yeah. Would you agree with that? At my times. You know, this morning you didn't know what state you were in. No. <laughs> he was, he we was, had trouble with you. He was so dr Tell me what happened last night. Yeah. He was uh, really plastered. We went back to my hotel room, had sex, and then, um, and then he was just really messed up. He, I was so freaked out, I was starting to scream and everything. My hands were shaking, and I'm crying because I thought he was choking on his own tongue, you know? So Because was, he was unconscious? Yes, or? he was like making these weirdest noises ever, and I was freaked out. I can't even get through his own phone because there's a security code. I'm tripping out. And then this morning when we come here, I try to give him coffee, feed him, I'm holding him, he's cold. Like, I wouldn't do that if I didn't love him, you know? Like, I love him so much. And it kills me that he doesn't want to be with, like, he pushes me away and doesn't want to be with me. Like, I'm not a bad person, okay? I'm not perfect, but you don't need to, I don't deserve for you to do this to me. I know you deep down inside you love me, and but you need to act right. You know, she had a guy over at my house when I'm at work that, like, I specifically told her this guy is not allowed at my house. And she secretly he, has him over. He came over and told me that he came over and talked to me, and it was nothing sexual. He, he's the one that told me that and you had you, a threesome with him and his then girlfriend. You, you left. So shut up. If you knew he didn't like this guy, you knew, hey, don't don't let him come over here. Why would you let him? He brought a chick with him. It wasn't so just him by he himself. He didn't have any caveats. He I didn't know, say he, was, he can't come over unless he's got but, a chick with but him. But you're, you're the one, the one that said Bailey, he likes threesome. Mr. Bailey, yeah. please. I'm advocating your case at this point in time. Why would you do it if you knew it was a problem with him? He came over to talk to me. I assumed he was my, okay, because I met him before I met my husband. The way we met my husband is not a normal way to meet a, a person. And well, tell me how you met him. All three of us had a threesome when we first met. <laughs> no, 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 we were all, arranged, uh, we were all we were arranged to, but they just ended up doing it on my bed, not me. Okay, well, you were part of it, whatever. When you meet somebody in the act of, I mean, and the first way that you see them is, is having sex with somebody else, how, how do you get from that to, to bride in 30 days? <laughs> I mean, and I'm serious. I'm not being facetious. I want to know what happened. Um, you know, I loved her. She had a good heart. She was sweet. You know, we had good times together. It, were you yeah, guys drinking I, a lot? No. 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 no you, you, everybody was sober. Yeah, we, we, we were <laughs> legitly happy. You, know? you were legitimately happy. You know, you can be legitimately happy with a till of the hun for 30 days. I mean, <laughs> you know, 30 anybody can put on a, put on a good show for 30 days. You That's know? what I felt like. Yeah. I mean, because, you know, 
anytime you know me and her try I try to talk to her about something that's bothering me like these different things maybe I am assuming maybe I'm not but I confront her about it and instead of like you know talking to me civil and trying to work it out she either you know raises her voice at me and or starts crying and makes me feel bad and I just end up saying you know drop Forget it you. I drop it because I can't deal with her you, you know do the exact same thing when I bring up stuff Ms. to Cummings, you you haven't talked to me yet the whole I'm so, proceeding. So, I'm so sorry ma'am do you understand what he's telling no, you yes, about I the difficulties do. in communication and I have changed will them. you will you how have you changed? I don't try, I don't scream at him. I don't like, you know, try, I try to like let him talk. Sometimes, yes, I do cut him off. Call but, names. Uh, but he has no room to talk when I talk do about Do you listen? Yes, I do. I don't believe you. Well, I know. Because, because, because you haven't listened to me yet. To, in order to listen to someone, you can't be speaking while they're speaking because not only. <laughs> you not hearing what they're currently saying, but that lets me know that even the first part when you weren't speaking, you were thinking about what you were gonna say. Mm -hmm. No, don't, no, that's just logic. When Divorce Court continues, Judge Lynn asks the million dollar question. Mr. Bailey, do you love her or don't you? If you would like your case heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com and follow us on Twitter at Divorce Court. Divorce Court returns with the case of Blake Bailey, who claims his wife Christina brings very little to the table. But will Christina stop interrupting long enough to understand Blake's position? Do you understand how he feels yeah, like that's... you? <laughs> Why don't you tell, you say, he says you don't have a job. I understand you that. You haven't gone to school. You don't have a driver's license. All that? Is all that true or not? I'm just no, asking. No, that is true. That okay. is true. I know that. Do you understand how he feels yeah, like that's... you? <laughs> Sorry. Do you understand how that makes him feel like you are not an active participant in your union because you don't have your stuff together? Yes, do, I do. Do you I, see that? Yes, I do see it. Okay. I do see it. What do you contribute to the relationship as far as, in any way, emotionally, structurally, whatever? What do you contribute? Well, I can, uh, well, emotional, like everything like that, but I mean, financial? No, I don't have a job. I've been trying. I mean, I'm still trying. That's I know fine. My mother never had a job and she contributed 90% yeah. hugely to the relationship. So yeah. I'm not equating one thing with the other. What mm -hmm. I'm asking you to do is tell me what it is you do contribute to the relationship. Are no. you, do, do you, do, do you cook? Do you oh, no. make sure he gets no, up? I are cook. you, are you his? Are you his support when he's down? Do it, what do I'm, you do? Okay. No, I I am there for him when he's down. I'm like there taking care of him when he's sick. I'm doing everything I can possibly, you know what I mean, for him. I like do the I do cleaning, I do the laundry, I take care of everything around the house. I try to help him when he's doing the bike. Um, I try to take care of the car. Do you I, appreciate I, what she does bring to the table? Does she keep the house clean, got everything together? She's holding down the fort while you're out the making couple, the money. The couple things she does, she does good. I mean, I'm not yeah. complaining about that. That but has value, you know. But I mean, but every day, you know, cleaning a bedroom and doing, I mean, laundry. When you do the laundry, you put it in, you wait an hour for it to get done. You don't sit there and, you know, do it by hand. Mr. Bailey, do you love her or don't you? Her. You know, I, I love her, but I can't be, like, in a marriage You can't be with, with her. her. Yeah. You yeah, that's and, nice. And, and you've made that clear to her. Yeah. And, and you've told her that. It's not like all of a sudden my feelings just disappear. But I mean, did, you, did you have oh, sex with her last life. night? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I wonder. You, know what? you like, like to have sex with me, no. but not be That's what she says. No, just yeah, like true. she said, I, she had to take care of me. So I, you were too I, intoxicated to know. No, he wasn't even messed up yet. She even said when I got back to her room, I just knocked out. Hello, yeah, it was before he got. He, we were drinking that we had sex. It was like right after when I got here. You're gonna deny that? Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. When Divorce Court continues, will Blake admit that although he wants out of the marriage, he's still sleeping with Christina? You had sex with her last night, Mr. Bailey. You had sex with you me did. every time you see me. You did, you did, you did. <laughs> yeah. Divorce Court returns with the case of Christina Cummins, who wants to save her marriage, although her husband, Blake Bailey, wants to pull the plug.
You say you want to save the marriage, Ms. Yes. Cummins. Now's your opportunity to tell me what's savable and what you would do different that would make him happier than he is now. This is your opportunity to convince him. What I'm willing, what you told me that your girlfriend, your supposable girlfriend now is doing for you, I can do it for you. I can cook, I can do all the stuff that you physically, emotionally, and mentally need. I can do it. You don't want to give me a second chance. I'm willing to, like, I've literally got on my knees and begged you to take me back. I've never done that to no one. I was not just a one-person kind of girl when you first met me, and when I met you, I thought, I, like, I thought I only, wa I only wanted to be with you. And you're making me go through a lot of whatever, and it's not okay. When, when, and look, I appreciate the self-censoring there. Mr. Bailey, <laughs> what would you like to say in response, sir? <laughs> now, I mean, it's, 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 and be honest. And, and, I mean, and Mr. Bailey, be honest with her from her heart. And I know this is an unusual circumstance and all of that, but this woman is wounded and she really loves you and she really wants you. And I just want you to tell her in the, in the kindest, most loving fashion that you can where your head really is and what you really intend to do, okay? I mean, I've made it clear multiple times that through our marriage, like, you what? know, every time I catch you in lies, stop lying to me. If you loved me, you won't lie to me. And then do the next every day, day Mrs. No, Mrs. Cummins. Then, then the next day, you'll be lying to me about something again. It's just, you know, you say you want a second chance. It's like I've given you so many chances. I made it very clear all these things. And like throughout the whole year and a half, you never changed them. Why all of a sudden? Because I, you know, I'm divorcing you. Are you going to change him? I think you don't want to accept what he's telling you. And let me say this to you. Let me say this to you, Ms. Cummins. You are in a state of confusion all of the time. Of course. I, I, part of your problem is that I don't think you're in a place that you can receive information, learn, and change, and get better. I think you, you're so busy spinning around in whatever circle that you're in that you can't, that, that, that you can't settle and receive and understand. I think that you, you've, you've, you've lived a very scattered life and you're having trouble pulling the pieces back together. Sure. No, I mean, I understand what you're sure, saying. Sure, sure, sure. Just give that a moment to see, to, 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 to see Ben, okay? No. Mr. Mr. Bailey, it's not fair to sleep with a woman who you know loves you and you don't want her back. It's not fair. It's not right. It's a small, cowardly thing to do. And I would ask you to stop. This woman would sleep with you whenever, whenever, however, because that's how she feels about you. And you should be man enough not to put her in that position. I know you don't want her back. I know you're done. And I even... I really even think, Mr. Bailey, despite your conduct, that you really tried. But I think you know one thing for sure, and that's this is not where you want to be. Don't lie to her. Leave her alone, because she's because she's frayed enough as it is. I do. You, 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 you had sex with her last night, Mr. Bailey. You have sex with you me did. every time you see me. You did, you did, you did. <laughs> yeah, you had sex with me. You have and sex with me every time. Wrong. And that's just wrong. And that's just wrong. So, Ms. Cummins, tell me about the $3,000 you're seeking in uh, transitional support. It's for the time that I've been out of the house, like, kicked out, you know? And, or, like, when he kicked me out, he never gave me the three weeks. He just, I left that very same morning. You chose because he to. moved his chicken you know. the same night, the next morning. And that really hurt me. And then he does, I'm sorry. Well, let, let me ask you this. Who was the primary breadwinner throughout the course of the year and a half relationship? Yeah, he but, was. Yeah. Okay. Did she ever have a job? No. <laughs> you can't just tell your woman, your wife to get out, move another woman in and say, so long, see you later. I didn't, though. Not my problem. <laughs> I, I, you know, but you owe her some money. You know her enough money to get back on her feet. I think $1,000 for three months, for three months rent is not unreasonable. Therefore, I award him $3,000 in favor of Ms. Cummins. It is so ordered. All right. Parties may leave the courtroom. Although Christina and Blake continue living apart and Blake is still living with his new girlfriend, Christina admits to sleeping with Blake again soon after appearing on the show. Christina feels that Blake still cares about her and she says he admitted to screwing up and being confused. Blake says that although he has moved on with his new girlfriend, he does still hold out a bit of hope that he and Christina will one day get back together.